this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog! Now this time we're going to be looking into the 17th episode of the third season of The Muppet Show, which features Spike Milligan. Now to give you guys a little bit of an example of who Spike Milligan is, he is actually a comedian, an actor, a writer, a musician, a poet, and all that kind of stuff. He is very multi-talented, but the one big thing that he is very well known for is actually his brand of comedy. He is known to be a very unique comedian in a sense, where his style is actually a lot more over the top. He is absolutely crazy, absolutely bonkers, to the point that he feels like he came out of a Tex Avery cartoon, or uh, something out of the early Looney Tunes cartoons in a sense. But, his style of comedy is actually very renowned to the point that this is what actually um, created this random style of comedy in which UK is actually prominently well known for. So much so that his comedy is actually what influenced Monty Python's Flying Circus to be more in that sense of random style. So, he is absolutely an influential comedian if you can at least try to understand him. But, oh my god, the episode of The Muppet Show that he appeared in. I just need to say this, guys. Out of all the episodes that I have seen of The Muppet Show, this is possibly the most crazy, the most insane episode that I've sat through. Now, I've seen a lot of episodes of The Muppet Show in which a lot of wacky shenanigans happen, and it has that tone of expect the unexpected, but never have I seen it as much to, as this, in this level. Like, oh my god, it is truly insane. Because here's the thing, the whole theme of this entire episode is to be international. This is the Muppet Show's way of celebrating all the different nations from around the world. In a way, you could say is that this is the Muppet Show's interpretation of It's a Small World, which I will get back to later. Uh, but it starts out regularly. It starts out as your typical wacky Muppet Show episode, where they began with, uh, like, this whole setting of Japan, where you got these samurai warriors dancing, and then suddenly Fozzie Bear comes out of nowhere, realizing he's in the wrong number, where he sings Oklahoma. So, it's pretty much this entire battle of this whole uh, Japanese setting and Fozzie Bear trying to do his song of Oklahoma. But, this is the thing. Normally, this would be one of the wackier skits uh, of a regular Muppet Show episode, but that is just the appetizer of what is to come. Because a lot of the bits require uh, the backstage story to be Kermit taking care of of everybody that's on backstage because of this whole theme of the internationalism to have all the nations come together it's tr like all it's just having all these nations trying to cooperate and to work with each other is the real difficult part and just madness suddenly ensue and keep in mind considering that we are talking about the muppets a lot of the jokes do require that it, but the, like they mostly connect with what nation that they're from so you do get a little bit of an exaggerated version of either like an Arab, a Scotsman, uh, whatever European nation like a, a Spanish, well you got the Swedish chef there in Spain, you got Mexicans, like you got Japanese, Chinese, you got all these kinds of people so it's a little bit exaggerated of what nation they're from but it's just purely crazy. Uh, some of the skits that actually do appear, uh, you actually got, um, like this Scotsman playing the bagpipes and then suddenly the bagpipes come to life and, uh, it's done in a marionette style because you can actually see the strings being play, uh, being played around with the bagpipes when it suddenly comes to life. Um, you also got another one with the Electric Mayhem where they're trying to perform the song America uh, from West Side Story and then suddenly all the nations just come in uh, just play like different little pieces of Whatever international music they would it's just there's no order. It's just purely insane um, Another bit I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Well like the, the most tame that you could probably find is um, 
uh, this little bit called Dog Walk, and this is actually performed by Wayne, and in a way, this little bit is actually a spiritual successor from one of the previous little bits called Jogging, because, like, you actually see, uh, it, like, the same background, and it actually has the same characters. Uh, like, Wayne Walking the Dog actually did appear in the Jogging bit, and now he's prominently featured. In fact, the Jogger actually does make an appearance in Dog Walk as well, so that's one of the more tamer ones. But then... Everything changed when Spike Milligan would come in. Oh my god. Like, you'd think that he would be the one to put, like, try to make this grounded in a way. To make things, uh, you know, to put things back to normal in The Muppet Show. But no, Spike Milligan is the most insane thing out of everything. Now, you got the wacky shenanigans backstage. That is enough, but Spike Milligan puts a whole new level from just wacky to purely insane because many of the bits that he appear he didn't appear like he doesn't really sing in any of his skits but he's mostly there interacting with uh sam the eagle uh like he, he starts out with like this coalition to work together between america and uh the british and, like, he's supposed to be the representative of the British, but then he comes up, Oh, I'm going to go down to that, I'm going to my head, just go down to save the quake. It's like, what the fridge? Like, he would go out speaking in mostly this uncomprehensible uh, British accent, and, like, he suddenly just goes crazy, and, like, probably his most insane bit, but also the funniest one, at least in my opinion, is the Muppet News Flash bit, which... Um, normally it's commonplace in the first season where you would have the special guest star appearing in the monitor, but in this one, uh, he actually appears with the news broadcaster trying to communicate with everyone else, trying to, you know, you know, like, since it is the more international episode, um, what, what Spike Milligan did is just mostly try to do these, like, exaggerated reactions to explain, uh, the news story that the news broadcaster is trying to say, and... Oh my god, that one is purely wackiness. It's probably the best example of Spike Milligan's comedy right there. That's where you can see um, his brand of comedy, his style of humor. It's like, this is what is the most prominently featured and probably one of the more comprehensible bits at the same time. But also, uh, you do see some of his other talents as well. Like, uh, I did mention before that he was a poet. And uh, there was one bit where he did a poem called The Intergalactic Brotherhoods... Uh, yeah, The Intergalactic Brotherhood of Man, Including Things. Uh, he actually did this little poem, and again, it's his style of random humor. And at one point, there, there was a little time when it would inter... Like, the, the whole poem would interrupt just to have Lou Zealand come in. Why? I have no idea. But... Then there's also the ending bit. This is pretty much the grand finale of this entire piece of insanity. And you could definitely feel like it is uh, a big piece of... Like, you could tell that this is a grand finale because, uh, as I mentioned before, this, was, this could be summarized as the Muppet Show's version of It's a Small World. Well, coincidentally enough, that's actually how they ended off. They, uh, you got all the nations come together and they sing It's a Small World. Now, the one thing I will say that's actually pretty interesting and, like, the kind of this subtle little thing that I do appreciate that's actually pretty clever is that the way that the whole bit starts out with It's a Small World, you can tell how everybody's movements are, like, more mechanic. Uh, like, they just, like, these quick, rigid movements, uh, you know, try, kind of like this little homage to the animatronics of It's a Small World. So that's, like, a cute little reference. But then, like... The movements become a lot more smoother and more Muppet-like as the song would continuously progress. But at the same time, you also got this wacky little cartoon bit where you got Spike Milligan coming in, uh, trying to do It's a Small World as, uh, like, whatever random nation there is. And then you got Sam the Eagle trying to be the straight man, trying to get him out. Uh, try, like, try, try to make sure, like, he doesn't appear so that... Like, the It's a Small World bit would have a little bit of class, but then he would always keep coming back. So, yeah, and, like, th this bit actually continues on. It, ev it, it even lingers onto the credits, where you still hear everybody singing It's a Small World after all. And then you got Spike coming in, um, like, just continuing doing his bit. And it's just crazy. You Like, you don't have a breather 
to calm your uh, to calm down like the most you'll get is just dog walk and even at that it is a very fast paced song so like this is just purely 25 minutes of absolute insanity so i would say overall yeah this is the craziest episode of the muppet show i have ever seen this is like the the, the tone of insanity and craziness can only be equivalent to the levels of like a Tex Avery cartoon from MGM. And th th it's just absolutely insane. This is really the definitive point of like expect the unexpected. This is literally a cartoon coming to life. But in a way, it does work as an episode of what it's trying to do in a sense. Because since the special guest star is Spike Lee, this is a guy who is renowned for this random crazy sense of humor that, you know, it actually does fit very well. It does kind of fit onto the whole setting of The Muppet Show. Like, he do like he definitely would feel at home in a TV show like this where he has the freedom to do whatever he wants and pretty much have The Muppets do whatever they wish to do, like, with whatever, with whatever kind of jokes or gags that they want to do, the sky's the limit with them, so, like, in a way to honor Spike Milligan and his form of comedy, the episode really does work. It does succeed on its mission. So, my recommendation, like, it is a bit difficult to say because, like, if you really are a fan of this crazy, over-the-top brand of humor, like, if you really like it truly insane, then you might actually enjoy this one. In fact, this could actually be a really good test to see if you enjoy uh, crazy, over-the-top humor, especially the ones coming from Spike Milligan. But at the same time, there is a little bit of a warning that I want to put out, is that considering that we are talking about the Muppet Show, and like, since it is set in the late 70s, um, I just want to give out a little bit of a warning for those who are sensitive towards racism and culturalism and all that kind of stuff, is that, um, like, maybe this might not be for you if you are too sensitive regarding the subject of, uh, racism or kind of like ja like a little bit of poking fun at people's nationalities and stuff like that. Th this could be the kind of episode where you could get easily triggered. So I might not recommend I I, I might not recommend it for those who are easily sensitive in that part, but yeah. Holy crap, I was not expecting this form of insanity. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode. And now it's time for me to just calm down until I can just jump onto the next episode of the Muppet Vlog. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I might just need a little bit of therapy or maybe this is my therapy after that watching that piece of insanity. So I'm just going to go and relax now. So until next time, see you later dudes.